everyone! Welcome to episode number 582 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. Are you ready to jump in feet first into the world of infrared sensor technology? I certainly hope so. My guest is Flux Technology CEO Ben White, and we are talking all about Flux Technology's groundbreaking Avalanche Photodiode, or APD, infrared sensor technology. We investigate the benefits that these sensors will bring to a variety of different applications. And where Ben sees sustainable photonic technology development headed in the future. Also this week, I check out a new stretchy electronic skin developed at the University of Texas, Austin, that could equip robots with the same softness and touch sensitivity as human skin. But first, please welcome Ben to Fish Fry. Hi, Ben. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for inviting me on the show. Absolutely. Okay, so first, for my audience who may not know, what is Flux Technology all about? So Flux is a startup in in the UK. We're a spin-out from the University of Sheffield. And really, we were created because we believe in a future where machines and robots are much more integrated into our daily lives. And to be able to do that effectively, they need to be able to see the world around them. And so machines use a infrared technology called LiDAR to be able to visualize what's going on around them. And they use infrared sensors to produce their images. So Flux is commercializing a new piece of IP that's a new high-performance infrared sensor that will enable machines and robots to see much further with much higher pixel density to enable this transition as robotics is integrated into everyday lives. So this could be an autonomous vehicle that comes and picks you up, or maybe a drone that comes and delivers your prescription. So Ben, just to clarify, is Flux Technology simply a IP seller, or are you guys actually manufacturing these semiconductors as well? So Flux is a product-based company. Our Aura series of noiseless in-gas APDs are offered to the market. They're a drop-in replacement for in-gas APDs that our competitors sell today. But we do have a huge amount of IP in the company in the background to launching this product and a patent portfolio around the design, but also a lot of know-how in the manufacture. So tell me a bit more about the origins of Flux. Your company came out of photonics research, right? Yeah. So I was a researcher at Sheffield before creating Flux, researching with um, my two co-founders, Professors Chi Hing Tan and Zhou Shen Ung, who both have a, a research group investigating detectors for all sorts of weird and wonderful applications. And then about in 2019, we had a, a breakthrough in a certain area where we could really see the value of this IP and the impact it could have on the world. And I guess we were faced with a choice of we could try and work with a company to commercialize this, which has some pros and cons and drawbacks, or do it ourselves and create a spin out company to be the one to kind of take this to market, try and turn it into a product. And so, yeah, spoiler alert, but that's the way we decided to go with it. And so Flux was created and I was a researcher at that time, but my role very quickly changed into being the one to drive the commercialization of this IP that we developed. And so I went on what's called a customer discovery journey where it's remarkable to think about it now, but we've never really engaged with industry about what we were researching. We've been researching it for many, many years and not asked really many people the right questions. And so first on the to-do list was to go out there and speak with lots of customers. And, And this is really where we came across LiDAR and the use of infrared sensors in LiDAR by machines and robotics as this industry kind of takes off. And so the timing was perfect there. And we set out with a vision to commercialize this for that. And so I took the role as a CEO. We raised a little bit of cash as a pre-seed round in in 2020. Terrible timing. Um, Just before the pandemic, we raised our pre-seed round. And that enabled us to to do some prototyping and go set up a supply chain. And then in just about a year ago, at the end of 2022, we raised a £4 million seed round to really commercialize this and take it to the next step by turning it into a product which we've just launched called Aura. Excellent. Okay. So 
Ben, tell me about your Avalanche photodiode APD infrared sensors. What specific benefits are we talking about with these sensors? Sure. So I think the way I like to explain this to people is when you buy a camera, like whether it's a, a really expensive camera like a DLSR camera or a, a phone camera, really the, the quality of the pictures that it produces is really determined by how good the sensor is inside the camera. And the exact same is true for these LiDAR cameras that are used by machines to visualize their surroundings in 3D. The quality of the infrared sensor inside it really determines how good the system performs. And so we've developed this new semiconductor technology that delivers up to 12 times higher sensitivity compared to the way that people build these sensors at the moment, which unlocks lots of benefits in terms of it allows you to see further. So you can visualize objects that are further away or increase your image resolution. So producing sharper images, it allows you to operate in a wider range of conditions, so be that atmospheric conditions or sunlight in, in a wider range of uh, day or night. And so it has lots of benefits there, translates into improved system performance. So what kind of applications would be a good fit for your Aura sensors? So LiDAR is the technology that we're really geared towards and this first product that we're marketing towards. And it really works in a similar way to radar, but using light instead of radio waves. So it's used in a wide range of different industries, be it for automation, so in factories and warehouses, for autonomous vehicles or advanced driver assist systems where you need features like emergency pedestrian braking. There's a huge amount of work going on to integrate these sensor systems there too. But our strategy really is, is now we've uh, commercialized this technology and launched our first product range. Route to market looks like we are focusing on very high value, low volume applications to start with. And so when we introduce the technology, it takes a bit more time to scale it to volume markets. So it's a really nice place for a beachhead market for a startup to start addressing. And then at, over time, as we learn how to test these and we can scale our supply chain, address the volume markets, which is the automotive. And in the future, we have ambitions to go into the telecom market too, or fiber to the home. Now, you guys are also shipping some of your Avalanche photodiode sensors now, right? Yeah, we launched the product in January this year and like straight off the bat announced our first customer, our launch customer, who's adopted it and designed this into their system. So it's an amazing win. And so quickly after the product launch, is a, I guess, a testament to the strategy that we have. We're designing a, a component that's completely retrofitable, so you don't need to change anything with your existing system. Just plug in our detector and replace it with the old component that you are buying, and it will turbocharge the performance. So it delivers that sensitivity benefit, which translates to 40% smaller systems or 50% longer range. So I also noticed that you guys recently joined the European Photonics Industry Consortium to collaborate in the sustainable development of photonic technology. So Ben, tell me more about that. Yeah, so the European Photonics Industry Consortium, or EPIC, is an interesting world to photonics. It's such a small industry, but very diverse, that there's a photonics powers a huge number of different applications all around the world. So telecommunications to defense systems to LIDAR and robotics. And so being part of the consortium, enables us to market our products to lots to a wide range of different potential adopters really effectively, but also allows us to build that reputation um, within a, a tight-knit consortium. Fantastic. Well, Ben, I think it's time for your off-the-cuff question. So, Ben, if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there, what would you have? Oh, uh tacos i think off the bat it'll be tacos just because i'm a big fan of mexican food and yeah i, I can't think of anything better right now <laughs> i love it that sounds great well ben i think that's all i have time for today thank you so much for joining me thank you so much amelia did you hear about the revolutionary new stretchable electronic skin developed at ut austin okay so what makes this new e-skin so remarkable? Well, it solves a major issue with current electronic skin technology. Until now, e-skin loses its sensing accuracy as it stretches. But with this new e-skin, that's not the case. 
Nan Shu Lu, a professor at the Cockrell School of Engineering's Department of Aerospace Engineering and Engineering Mechanics, who led this project, sets the stage of this new e-skin development like this. Much like human skin has to stretch and bend to accommodate our movements, so does e-skin. No matter how much our e-skin stretches, the pressure response doesn't change. And that is a significant achievement. Wow. Okay, let's back up a second. Electronic skin technology senses pressure from contact, which then alerts the machine to how much force to use, like to touch a person or to grab a cup. Now, when conventional e-skin is stretched, it also senses that deformation. That reading creates additional noise that skews the sensor's ability to sense the pressure. That reading could also lead to a robot using too much force to grab something. So what makes this new electronic skin different? Well, the key here is the use of an innovative hybrid response pressure sensor. While conventional e-skins are either resistive or capacitive, this new e-skin actually employs both responses to pressure. In addition to these sensors, which took Lou and her team years to perfect, this team also uses stretchable insulating and electrode materials, which altogether enables this new e-skin innovation. In their tests, this team was able to use this new electronic skin to create inflatable probes and grippers that could change shape to perform a variety of sensitive, touch-based tasks. The inflated skin wrapped probe was used on human subjects to accurately capture their pulse and pulse waves. They also used the deflated grippers to hold on to a tumbler without dropping it, even when there was a coin inside. And this device was also used to press on a crispy taco shell without breaking it. That's even a challenge for me. So where is this e-skin technology headed from here? Well, this team is working with Roberto Martin Martin, assistant professor at the College of Natural Sciences Computer Science Department to build a robotic arm equipped with this new e-skin. They have also filed a provisional patent application for this technology, and Lou points out that they are also open to collaborating with robotics companies to bring this technology to market. <laughs> Lou says this about the potential uses for this new electronic skin. In the future, if we have more elderly than available caregivers, it's going to be a crisis worldwide. We need to find new ways to take care of people efficiently and also gently. And robots are an important piece of that puzzle. This team also contends that human caring robots could also be used in disasters as well. They could be used to search for trapped or injured people and could also possibly apply on the spot care as well. Wow. So, if you want even more information about this remarkable new electronic skin or more information about Flux technology, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into X, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we are now on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon too. 
And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series. And, of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this here podcast on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcast, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some exciting upcoming episodes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or, heck, you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of May 17th, 2024, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.